Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast. Uh, also, some people may be joining us as this is a first uh, podcast we've recorded as a video. So if you're watching us on YouTube, hello. Uh, there may be more of these in the future. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by our Director of Learning, Danette Fentimenzies. Hello, Danette. Hi, Jez. <laughs> and we are also joined by our social media and everything wizard, Kanika Chopra. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so today, uh, as we can tell by the title, it is Finding Your Why, which is popularized by Simon Sinek in both a book and a TED Talk, uh, which if you haven't seen, I would say that's probably the mandatory reading for this particular uh, thing. But it's, it's all right. We'll explain the concept a little bit as we go forward. Uh, so I wanted to maybe, maybe mum, you might be a good person to just even establish what is finding your why as a concept. Okay. So part of it is, um, you know, we are driven by our emotions. And so one of the things in Simon Sinek's talk that he talks about is really, if we're trying to get people to follow, say, in a business, our purpose, et cetera, it's really explaining the why first rather than the how or the what. And for each of us, we have a why. And I think that when you understand your why personally, it helps you stay more on track on what gives you joy, where your brilliance is. And yeah, obviously, if you're doing stuff you love and it's, it's on your purpose, that helps make you happier, but it also makes the world a better place. So for me, this is such a beautiful topic. Yeah, totally. And uh, I think it's a really exciting one to get into um, because I think it's something that especially if, uh, if you are in a lockdown or if you've been in a lockdown, you may have had time to sort of think about this kind of topic. Uh, so it's exciting to sort of look at it in a bit more detail. Uh, and so I thought I might start with the first question, which is why is it so hard to find your why? And I might start with you, mum. Uh, what are some reasons you think people may struggle to find this? Mm, great question. So uh, a couple of things that I think stop people um, from doing this is, first of all, life's busy. And this requires you to sit and be still. Because you've got to sort of check in, you know, what is the stuff that I love that gives me joy? And often as human beings, we discount the stuff we're good at, because we believe everyone else is really good at it. And we forget that actually, often when we're really good at it, it comes easy to us. But that's a unique trait of us. But you've got to sit and be still to actually recognise that. Yeah. I think, too, there's so many options. Like you could be potentially, your, your why could be around many, many different things. So, again, if you don't have that space to think about it, you can become overwhelmed. Um, I think also sometimes it requires that time for self-awareness. So to get to know yourself, what works for you, what doesn't. And also, I think your life experiences sometimes guide you to what really is that why for you. And the last thing I'd say is, depending on your family, those you hang around with, your why may or may not resonate with them, which means that sometimes you might sort of know what it is, but to actually say, this is, this is what I want can actually be quite scary and, and you know, those around you may not necessarily support your why and that can make it really difficult too. So they're sort of my insights. Great question. Thanks, Jess. That's all right. And I might throw this now to Kanika. Why do you think people struggle to find their why as well? Is there anything that uh, you want to talk about this? Um, I, th I would agree with Nelly. A lot of people obviously don't have the self-awareness, etc. But another thing that I was thinking of while Danette was saying all of this is that a lot of people may not have the privilege to look for their why, because for a lot of people, it's just about putting food on the table and paying rent and looking after their family. So it's just whatever the next best thing is for them. Um, I think it's a privilege to be able to find your why and think about it because you have to be financially stable to be able to do something like that or you need to have something you can fall back on to be able to pick your why. So I guess picking your why comes from a place of privilege. It's not something that I think everyone has access to and I don't think it's something everyone can actually do. Mm, I'd um, agree with that. Because, yeah, the only reason like I could do it is because I knew my parents could help me my parents could like find me and I know if something went wrong I always have a place to go back to um and I think same with like all of us but I think there are people more people 
then not don't have that option. So, yeah, absolutely yeah. true. Mm, yeah, uh, that is definitely an obstacle to it as well. Um, I, I had some thoughts on this as well, and I was thinking it's some of it is because we live in a very changing. Uh, oh, here we go. And John's joined us. Great. Um, hello. Hello, John. Oh, look at that. You got a beard. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect. So, so, Jess, do you want to share yours and then we can ask John that first yeah. question too? John, you've joined at exactly the right time. So we've just uh, been going a little bit around just talking about the first question, which is why is it hard to find your why? And I was just going to say, I think some of it is to do with a, a changing landscape generally. So, um, as technology is changing, it can muddy the water a little bit as to what your purpose is because there's more things that are being an input to you. And I think also it's not necessarily encouraged in people as well that you should try and find your why. It's more something that, as you were saying, mom, you have to sort of sit down and do for yourself. And, uh, and so, yeah, that was really my thoughts. But, uh, John, I wanted to get your thoughts on why you think it's hard for people to find their why. Well, firstly, thank you for persisting because this is one talk I really wanted to be involved in. For me, the why goes back even further than that. And um, I, think, I think it comes down to the way we parent as well. And you think that young kids are very inquisitive as to why. And as a parent, you're sort of going, I don't know, you, you have your, your kids around you and they go, but why, but why, but why? And we... You know, we shut them down continuously and at some point we go, because I said so or because that's what mum said or, you know, that's that's just the way it is. So asking that why question or that discovery gets shut down at a very early age by parents and with all due respect to parents and me being one, I've, I've done it myself, but um, so we stop that inquisitiveness there. Now, then it goes on, I think, and when you get into your teenage years and people, you know, what do you want to do? And there are some that, that really know their why, but the majority of us, we don't. We don't know what we're, uh, what our passion is. So we then get into a job or into a role or we go to uni and, and do a course and we start working and we start then getting our bills in. We, you know, buy a house or take out a loan for a car or, you know, whatever it may be, and we get stuck. So it's then really quite hard to change from what you're doing, earning your money and that pays the bills to going to something that you're really passionate about. Um, and it's that stuck in the rut type thing that I think, um, you know, I think think we, we get caught up in. And even Simon Sinek was talking about um, Samuel Pierpoint uh, Langley and talking about he was there to be rich and famous. That's what he wanted. Um, and that's, I think, what we all want rather than our why is potentially to change the world. Um, you know, we're, we're prepared to go chase money, but we don't want to work too hard at it. So they would be my my sorts of things that I'd, I'd say. Yeah, and I think that that's also, I think Kanika was also touching on that a little bit, that sense that you have to have the space to even be able to work to, um, to even be able to question what your yeah. why is. You know, there has to be that, buffer which is yeah i think it's a really good point as well and it's just another challenge and something that is quite hard and a lot of self-discovery uh, i wanted to throw this question out to the group as well uh and what and the question is what are some things to look out for uh that may illuminate your why so what are some things that you can look out for generally in life that may give you some hints as to what your why might be and i might actually just throw this back to john and we might go the other way this time uh so john is there anything that you look out for it's what am I passionate about? So if I can discover what my passion is or what drives me or what motivates me, um, what do I naturally gravitate towards? Um, they're the sorts of things that help me develop or discover what my why is. And they're the things that I like to get out of bed for. Um, and if I can do those things on a regular basis, rather than staying in my rut, um, you know, they are the things that yeah, really motivate me, really drive me to do that. Now, fortunately, unfortunately, I sort of spend some time in my why, um, such, such as stuff with magical learning. I don't spend nearly enough time in my why. And part of it is because I'm, you know, sole income earner for, you know, the family and you've just got to make those things happen. So there's mine. 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's really good. Yeah. Um, can I come on for this? <laughs> no but i mean what you're saying is uh it, it, i mean it touches on what we were talking about with the last one as well and but yeah uh it's it's great uh, kanika i was gonna throw this to you what what are some things that you look out for to help illuminate your why um i think i was one of those kids that always like kind of like had to know what i wanted to do um and i've like kind of like had this inculcated in me because like my parents were very much like, you've got to have a goal. It doesn't matter what your goal is, but you've got to have a goal and you've got to reach it and you've got to like work towards it. And I think when I was really young, my goal was to just like get a master's degree in creative writing <laughs> or like do something in sort of that realm. I got to that point And when it was done, I was like, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> um, and it was really like hard because I still think I'm kind of figuring out what my why is but I think after spending a lot of time by myself in lockdown over 235 plus days and counting <laughs> I kind of just realized that my why doesn't have to be profitable my why doesn't have to be what puts money on like what feeds me my bills mm. my job and my passion can be two very different things mm. And also I realized that with myself, I was self-learning that when I try and make my why, my everything, I grow to resent it or I grow to have like a very toxic relationship with it because I can't do anything kind of like half. And mm -hmm. then if something happens in my why, I don't take rejection well. Cause like, I've just like, I have literally done everything in my power to make this work. How dare it not work? So I realized I had like unhealthy tendencies to fully focus my attention on something. Um, but I, I think like now it's good because now I have a job that I really like and I really enjoy doing and it does challenge me enough to keep it interesting. But at the same time, I'm running a project that I am actually passionate about on the side. But doing that for me is not about the money and it's not about anything other than doing the project itself. Um, and I think that's kind of awesome because then I'm not stressed out about it. And I'm just like, if it doesn't go where I wanted to go, it's fine because my life in any other way is not affected. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so Love that. that's kind of how I approach my why. And I'm also keeping an open mind to the idea that my why may constantly change. Mm. I think you're right, though. I think that's part of it, too, that for some of us, our why does change. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, what we wanted or what we thought we were passionate about at 18 could be very different to what we're liking and passionate about at 38 and 58 and 88 and yeah so yeah mm. yeah I think it's just leaving myself like I think now I kind of am working like this where creatively there's a list of things I want to do in my life um, and irrespective of what I'm doing for work and what I'm doing to pay the bills I'm going to slowly work towards taking these things off my why list essentially mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and that's kind of like the best I can really do because I also have to like maintain having good mental health and pay bills and do all these other things. And Kanika, you should mention your project. Um, my project is a collaborative literary project. I thought I was done with literature, but I did come back to it full circle um, after a year and a bit of going like, I hate everything about it and I hate the industry and everything is so like hard to break into. And it was also like a problem for me was it's also very white um, and narratives were getting lost that I think needed to be put to the forefront. And I think my goals with what I wanted to do was create a community, um, put work out there, create something in print and also kind of prove to myself that I can do all of this without being in a certain institution and without having someone tell me to do it. And I think it proved my competency to myself. Um, and I think a lot of people have benefited from it and it has created a community and I have created a network of people. Through this, I got asked to do that class on project management and stuff. So different opportunities are coming from this and I am seeing results from this. Um, and yeah, so basically it's just like a literary collaborative zine. So it's kind of like a literary journal, but I do it on my own time. There's no form. I make it as fun and playful and ridiculous as I want it to be. 
Um, and since I'm in charge, nobody can really tell me what to do. And it gives room for flexibility because I'm willing to change at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Um, so I think that's my that's my project. It's called More Than Melanin. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my why for now. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, I mean, as you're saying, it has a lot of good knock-on effects where there's a community that's created from it. I think that's a good sign yes. as well. Did you want to say something there, John? I think it's that law of attraction. But if you're passionate and you're putting your effort and, you know, you attract people that can help and promote that because you're so passionate about it. Mm, yeah. Mm. Um, I, I wanted to throw this to you, Mum. Are there some other things that we haven't talked about that help you illuminate your why if you're looking yeah. for it? So, and I, I think this is one of my gifts that I see this in others. So if you look at people's energy, so if you look at Kanika's energy when she started to talk about more than melanin, mm-hmm. like she just lit up. And yeah. so that is really good sign that, you know, that's part of your why. Yeah. And the other thing I'd say, which sort of comes to what both you and John also shared is it's something that we would do for free. So even if people wouldn't pay us, we would still want to do it because it's part of inherently part of who we are and it's important to us. And it's remembering that everyone's different. So what they focus on is important to them. It doesn't have to be the same as what I focus on. So that energy, that's one of the things when people go, I don't know what, what you know, my why is, when they do what Kanika does, I go, there it is. There's mm-hmm. part of it. <laughs> and if you are listening to this as a podcast, it might be worth going and seeing what uh, mum was talking about on the YouTube link, uh, which I'll include in the podcast <laughs> description there. Uh, just some quick uh, tidbits that I found when I was doing a little bit of research and thinking about this. Uh, Robert Denny Jr. actually, he had an Inside the Actors Studio interview and he was talking about, for him, he's like, in this case, in terms of finding your why, he's like, in your life, you won't know what it is straight away, but you'll feel an invisible thread constantly pulling you in a certain direction. Yeah. And his uh, saying was just to basically just try and follow that as best as you can. You're not going to be able to feel it all the time, but occasionally you will feel a small tug in a direction that you uh, may be passionate about. Uh, I thought I thought also one thing that does kind of interest me, and it was something that I uh, heard by this uh, guy called Darren Brown, who some of you may have heard he's an illusionist and also a sort of mental magician. But he said that there's magic. When people find out about magic tricks, they have two reactions. One is either like, say, if I make a coin disappear and then I make it reappear in my hand with, just through magic. Uh, and you find out basically I was hiding the coin in my fingers. There's two reactions. One is that you think, oh, that's really dumb. Like, oh, I can't believe I got fooled by that. And the other one is, wow, that's amazing that you can make people think that a coin is hidden or a coin has disappeared. And the way that you fall on certain issues based on that thing where either you think it's stupid or you think it's fascinating that something small like that uh, can affect people is a good test. I think he calls it something like the magic test, but I think that's also a good way to illuminate. If you're finding that you're more interested where people find something boring, that could be a good way to illuminate maybe what's uh, what, what could be your passion uh, and your why. Mm, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cool. Well, I've I've only got one more question here, which I think uh, could be fun to talk about and hopefully we'll get some of that passion that Danette was talking about. Uh, so I wanted to talk about just to each of us, what is at the moment, what do you think your why is or what are some of your whys if you've got a couple sitting there? And uh, maybe I'll start with Kanika as we've talked about yours a little bit. <laughs> um, what, what, in your mind, what are some of your whys or what is your why at the moment, do you think? Um, I think my why is to um, put different perspectives and stories into the world in a sense um create a community of support around these things um I think at the moment these are just like kind of broader answers I can give you on this but like specific goal wise I would I think when I like have no bars held on my imagination I think of like more than melanin could get to a point where like it could like give people scholarships to like study writing or do editing or just like sh- like basically different work experiences and follow the di- different kinds of people around just like anything I wanted to be more of like a I would ideally love it to be like a whole thing like a publication at the same time like an events 
an event thing where it creates like community event things, maybe a community kitchen. Like, I don't know, I want it to be community based. I think um, it being kind of for the people <laughs> is kind of what I think is my um, why at the moment with this. Um, but like other non person and more personal wise is I would like to edit a book. I would like to curate more things. I would like to be asked to do things for other organizations that are similar. Um, but that's just like more to kind of toot my own horn. <laughs> that's very self-indulgent. It's more just like, this would look great on my CV. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I got chills when you were talking about that bigger purpose. Mm. Yeah, I mean, hopefully one day we'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I might throw this to you, uh, Mum. What are some of your whys or what is your why? Yeah, so everyone knows I love to learn and I love to learn to help others grow, to find their passions, because I believe when we're all working as much as we possibly can towards the why, where our strengths are, we're happier, we create that ripple effect to others as well because I, I love to have a world that is far more happier and you know people are calm and more compassionate to one another so for, for me I learn to help others understand themselves and actually help them be a better version of themselves as well um, personally you know I'm blessed with a beautiful beautiful family which includes John um, because he is part of the Magical Learning family, mm -hmm. absolutely includes you and Kanika mm -hmm. as well. And I think I want to leave something behind that impact future generations in a really positive way. Part of the reason I have a library all around our veranda is I know that the world is quite digital, but I'd love the chance for future generations to go, oh, look at these things, look at these books. Um, Wow. Um, so for me, I just want to make the world a better place. I want to help people find their gifts. And at the end of the day, I wake up every day and I'm blessed to be able to do that every day, which I'm so grateful for. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. Great. That's question. awesome. Good, good work. Yeah, that, that was really nice. Um, John, I might throw this to you. Same question. Uh, what are your whys or what is your why? My, my why, I, I think, and I've always been, my why's been easy. Uh, it's, um, I've always been fairly clear on it. And I know when Graham and Danette and I were doing some stuff at the farm, what, the other month, you know, my why is to help people, help people grow, develop, be better, you know, better people, um, learn, whatever it may be in that space. Uh, it always has been. And while I, you know, I can think back, um, you know, after school and going to uni, it was always about, you know, I went, I went into teaching and not because I really knew, I think I I think the reality of I, I went in there because a, a girlfriend of mine went in the year before and it was like, oh, well, not as not as in a girlfriend, but just a, a female friend of mine. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'll give that a crack. But teaching has always been my passion. Teaching, um, you know, I think I've always gravitated towards magical learning. Um, you think that, you know, I, I went into magical learning there for however long I was there not very long and left and it would have been easy to walk away but um, you know somehow we connected up again I think five years ten years later or whatever it may be and yeah it's um, you know magical learning is it's important to me because of what it espouses um, and what it is trying to do in the bigger picture not just you know with small numbers but so yeah that's my why um, to me, it's it's very simple. Um, getting it to work is a different story, but it is very simple. Thank you, John. Too. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Yeah, I think what's really nice about this chat is how uh, congruous everyone's whys have been. In like in this chat, it's all about helping other people and you know uplifting and helping them learn and you know as the, as that can uplift people. I think that's really cool. Um, and I just had some for this one. I think that one of my whys is definitely to inject fun into a lot of things um, where sometimes there isn't. Uh, and I think that that is uh, quite valuable. And I also think that I, I really am interested in creativity uh, and then more specifically within structures. I, I think that there's always 
And that, that sort of, to me, is a bit more about getting the best out of everyone. You know, not everyone fits a mold. And, you know, it's, it's about trying to, how, how can we be creative and use this person's skills in this role? To me, that is interesting. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Love and so, that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wanted to thank you all. This has been a really, really good chat. And I'm glad we could organize it uh, for people that are listening or watching at home. It's been a bit of a tech struggle for all of us. <laughs> uh, but we did make it. And I'm glad we did because this was a really good chat. I just wanted to maybe go around once more and just any final thoughts that you have uh, just because I really enjoyed this chat. Uh, so I might start with um, with Danette and we can just go around from there. Um, and can I say first, Jez, that that fun bit is actually super important because when we have fun, our brain works far more effectively than when we're really serious. So that's a great part of your purpose. I love that. Um, for me, I think it's for all of us to stay curious and to follow those threads that you talked about that Robert Downer Jr. said because... Sometimes you'll go into a situation and think, oh, and then something just sparks and you're like, oh, yesterday I had a, a meeting with a potential new client. And from the moment we met each other, it was like, wow. I was like, oh, this is so awesome. And that to me, that energy, and they, they felt exactly the same. It's like, okay, this is something. Pay attention to that energy. There's going to be something magical like that. <laughs> 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 so that's mine thank you that's all right um i'll throw this to kanika now uh any final thoughts you have on this um i think you also have to like leave room for being like kind to yourself in these situations at least like i said for me um hyper focusing on my why takes away the joy and the fun from it and makes it like I said, like a bad ex-partner or something. Um, that's how I like feel about so many things that I've done. But I've also, what a really good thing about that was, I thought I was like kind of done with the whole literary thing. But like, again, like you said, that invisible string, I came right back to it, but I just approached it from like a completely different perspective, um, which I think was really good. And another thought, um, this is actually a quote, Neri, this one's for you, it's about books. Um, so I, I can't remember who said this, whether it was like someone called, whether it was like Ray Bradbury or Stephen King or something, but um, it basically says that um, e-books are like the elevators and real books are like stairs. Like you can't replace stairs, essentially. It's like a vibe. I love it. Of like, I'm obviously paraphrasing, but they just yep. compared digital books to elevators and actual like tactile books to stairs. So I love it. Thank you. There's no replacing them, really. Um, but yeah, that's how I wanted to tell you. Nice, I love it. Good, good one. And John, uh, any final thoughts on this topic? I think if you can discover your why, you know, it goes back to the old phrase, you'll never work a day in your life because you'll enjoy what you're doing. You'll enjoy getting out of bed for whatever it is. Um, and you will actually, and I think you'll actually then help other people find their why you won't try and hold everything in close to you and not share you're wanting to share as a result of finding your why you're wanting to to help people grow in that field if that's where they're wanting to be so look I think your why is is why you get out of bed yeah well thank you all so much it's been a really good uh this has been a great podcast I feel like we've all been quite like personal and it's been really nice and uh hopefully this will help illuminate for a lot of people there why or even some places to start maybe thinking about it because it's been really good for me and i've taken a lot from it so i just wanted to thank everybody for making the time uh i've really appreciated doing this podcast so thank you all very much thank you so much yeah, jess too thanks, appreciate jess. it yeah it's been fantastic awesome well everybody have a magical week and we'll talk to you soon Thank right. you all. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.